Hi. Um, some of you have asked how I actually edit my f photographs um, or if I take the pictures and then they make them look that way. I'm going to tell you that um, you know the, a good photograph starts with really getting, getting the photo to look right, your lighting, your white balance, um, the big three, the ISO, the white balance, and the exposure and, um, and aperture. But uh, this is the workflow. This is what happens after you take the picture. And the workflow is where you go in and do the work of the picture. Uh, you want to do it as, as little work as possible so that you can go out and shoot and make money, theoretically. Um, so I have taken a picture of my daughter, and we're going to edit that up and show you just what I would do um, if I was going to take this picture and process it for anyone. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you about some actions that I use. Um, I have downloaded, as you can see, tons and tons of actions, but actions are just the normal steps. They're, a, they're like a little macro. And the first action that I recorded is just copying the background layer and turning it off. If you expand any action, you'll just see this one's layer via copy and then hide the background. So I'm going to run that one. And notice that it, it just makes a copy and turns off the background. Now I have, I can always go back to that background. Okay, second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this uh, image. She, there's just too much over in the right, and I want her to be more of the focus. So I've set my crop dimensions to the same dimensions of the digital image, which on my camera is 3,008 pixels by 2,000 pixels high. So what I'm going to do in CS5 is I'm going to try to hit her um, which CS5 does a great job because it has, uh, when you do the crop, it, it puts in the rule of thirds. So I'm going to try to hit her face at that rule of thirds and leave in as, as much as I can. Uh, maybe, whoa. Um, just try to get her where she needs to be um, uh, in the rule of thirds. Okay, so I like the crop. And there we go. So we'll, we'll zoom out a little bit. A little more visually interesting. Okay, now I'm going to start with my processing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on her face. So the key to any portrait are the eyes. I love her freckles. I looked just like this as a kid except a male. So I'm going to go in with the dodge tool and I set mine for midtones at 30%. I want to make the eyes brighter I don't want to make her look nuclear in the eyes. So I'm just going around the whites, lightening up the, the whites. I could go ahead and take care of this. I might take care of her eyes. She was a little tired that day. Um, but I'm going to go, the next thing I'm going to go to is the sponge tool. I'm going to saturate it at about 50% um, and I'm going to make my, uh, my brush just about the size of the blue in her eyes. I really don't want to change the color of her eyes. I just want to bring out that blue. Now you could do this for any color. You could do it for her lips, so forth, so on. Okay, so I've done that. Next thing um, I might want to do is work on her eyes. You have a bunch of different ways to work on um, tired eyes. You could use the dodge tool, depending on the age. Like if she had a lot of wrinkles, um, then I would use a different tool. If it's just they're a little dark, you can see just with the dodge it lightens them up, but it doesn't look real. Uh, so what I do is I use the patch tool. And what I do is I find an area of skin where I it's close, and then I take out that purple area. Now sometimes this doesn't work out really great, but basically I'm going to take this, I'm going to go to a very clean area of her face, and you can see it smooths it a little bit, maybe not as... Uh, maybe not quite as clean, but uh, we can we can take a look here and see what you think. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is and and go back. She's fine now. A little bit like me, she doesn't have very uh, dark eyebrows, so I'm going to take the burn tool and I'm going to go for mid tones and I'm going to bring it down to a size that's about the size of her eyebrows. Um, just to give them a little punch, I'm going to put it about 50%, just to kind of darken them up. It's probably a little much, so we're going to go probably to about 33%. I'm 
I just want to add a little bit of definition. You don't have to, but that's one more thing I do. People with dark eyebrows, it works, um, it, or they're thinning it, it. It brings it out a little bit. Now that's at 100%, so it's added a little definition to her eyes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out uh, this little spot she had on her chin. Um, looks like she, she bumped or cut herself. Two ways to do it. We can do the patch tool, taking that moving it up takes care of it just fine um, let's go back and I'll show you another way to spot healing brush just draw that it both of them are pretty good uh, for taking that out um, you know people don't really want to see pimples zits I, I like her freckles I want to leave her freckles and uh, the only one I might take out is this one because it's just so prominent uh, but you see it can leave a white area so sometimes it's just better to leave them now if, if your your subject has a lot of acne um, you want to take a lot of it out but if you take all of it out think about that you know they're gonna say well hey what happened to it they may ask you to take all my acne out well you you could spend a lot of time doing that okay uh, moving on um, we want to take out anything extraneous uh, in the image so you do a real good zoom. See right here by her head, there's a leaf. Probably not very distracting, but enough that it might draw you away from her. So all I'm going to do is take the patch tool, take that area, and move it over to a similar area. You'll notice it disappears. I'm going to do the same for this, this leaf. And we're going to, it's great if you can find lines to line things up because it, it leaves a more natural pattern to it. Okay, she's looking good. Um, we're, we're cropped and framed up. We're about to roll through. That's probably the most time-consuming piece. We're going to roll through our actions. And I've lined up my actions here, what I do. If you've never used actions, get into them, find them. There are tons of them on the internet that are free. The first one I do is I call a small filter vignette high pass. Basically what I've turned off is like a lens correction that would put a vignette. But any action you can go in and see what the action does. Uh, the first step converts it to a smart object. Then it goes through a high pass filter. Then it sets the fil sets some uh, blending modes on that high pass filter. And then we don't do a lens correction, but you know that's that's a step in there we could use. So first step is to add a high pass. This is going to make it um, truly uh, very focused. It's going to remove some of the haze. Okay. So we'll go through with that. And you really don't notice much of a change. Uh, we probably should zoom in a little bit and you can, you can kind of see some of these go. She just looks a little crisper. Um, okay, so the next one I do is a blur with a um, high, high pass mask. Um, basically the steps duplicates the layer and it goes through a blur, it's a Gaussian blur. It goes through another high pass um, with different settings. Um, it, it basically, I got this from a place that does boudoir, which really what I was going through for was smoothing skin. Uh, it's called Better Boudoir Photography, um, something like skin correction. But if you just Google Better Boudoir Photography Action Photoshop, you're probably going to find it. Uh, what it really is going to do is it's going to smooth the skin out and it's going to add um, kind of a haze to it. So. Let's go through that. Now, when you do this, it has to be on this. Notice that our layer has already had the smart filter and the high pass. So let's go ahead and run that. I'm going to get selection here and run. Now, you're really going to notice a blur to her face. You notice she's kind of foggy. So we've also added a separate layer here on the bottom. We've added a blur layer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize that layer so I can work with it. I'm going to set the opacity to 50%. It's really, um, really simple. It just rasterizes the layer so I can work with it a little bit more. And she's kind of back to normal. She's still a little fuzzy. We could go up and make her a little more dreamy at an opacity of 85%. 50% um, is usually what I leave it at. I don't like to do too much editing, but I'm going to put it at 70% so we can at least see it. You can see that her skin has smoothed a little bit. Uh, there's a little glow to her. It's added a nice effect uh, to, to the flowers. We've got kind of this ethereal look. It works really great with kids, but you're still seeing some detail because we use the high pass. 
So let's go back in. The next thing I do once I set this is I go in and I make um, the T section of the eyes, any jewelry, and the hands or feet, I take off that blur. So how do I do that? Select that layer, select erase, and my brush size is, is about the size of a little bit less than the entire eye. And I'm going to go over her barrettes. Notice it adds a little punch to those. And watch her eyes come out when I do that. She's not the foggy, hazy eyes. People, when they see them, see eyes or a portrait, they're going to go, oh, wow. And this is the funny thing, hands. People will notice hands are out of focus. Don't know why, but they do. And so we go over hands. We also do feet. Any buckles, like I said, or jewelry. If she was wearing a necklace, I'd go through that necklace, and I would make it kind of come out and be a little shiny. So that's, that's basically what I would do for a portrait. There's one more step I could do, um, and that would be to add a little bit of a vignette. Some people don't like that. Some people do. But as far as I'm concerned, this, this portrait's done. Um, there are other effects you can add as far as actions go. Um, let's go ahead and combine these layers. I'm going to select both of the layers, and I'm going to merge them. Okay, and let's take a look at the original. I didn't really do any color correction on it, but here is the finished product, and here is the original. Um, see, we've got a little brighter eyes, we've got a little little glow, we've gotten rid of that uh, those leaves in the background, but it all still looks natural. It's still her. Okay, so we're going to put this in a group, and we're going to call this group original. The way I, I put it in a group was just highlighted the image and did a control G or you Mac people command G. Okay, now I'm going to copy it. Just drag that group and make it a new layer. Close the original. Now I'm going to work with the copy. Here is a um, another sample of what actions can do. Some of my actions are are um, are just some that I've I've downloaded from the internet. Uh, some of them crea I've created. Um, there's some that are like a Polaroid effect. This would turn into a Polaroid. Let's do one um, that I like. It's a it's called a cool photo effect. It's doing all this for me. Make sure your your layer is selected on the copy, and we're gonna highlight photo of cool photo effect, and just press play. It's gonna ask me a couple of questions. How's the brightness? And I've learned from this one just choose OK. And how's this brightness contrast? OK. And then how do we like this this image? So it basically is going to show us uh, what this would look like if it was an older picture or maybe a Kodachrome or a Velvia type of a film. So where do we get, where do we come from? Here's our original. Here's just a normal process. And then here is basically if we wanted to add a little bit of punch to it. Uh, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, processing or uh, actions, go ahead and give me a call. Uh, not a call. I don't want you calling me. Uh, send me an email, photographybyjeff at gmail.com.